I'm Pat Gunn, and we're playing Skyrim. So, we are going to return to Riften and uh, make some progress on the Thieves Guild quests. Well, actually, we might make a quick detour around and see how many of these three quests we can uh, we can scoop up along the way. So yeah, this is just, um, it's, it's a big part of the fun of the game. If you're really into plots and keeping, keeping them straight, then you might want to actually go almost exclusively down quest lines. But I, I find that generally uh, the quest lines tend to present you with the same kind of dungeon a lot. So I, I kind of like to mix it up by, uh, by uh, completing the quests more geographically. There's a noise, but it looks like it's right inside Crovanger Hall. For a second I thought that was a dragon, but it's just a funny shaped cloud. So I am hearing something nearby that sounds dragony. It'll be good to get out of the sun for a while. Yep, sure will. So I think we're in here looking for a sword. I should note that if you do hear a cat on any of these uh, Let's Plays, uh, or something that sounds like a cat, it is a cat. I I have two cats that like to perch on my lap uh, whenever I'm uh, on a computer, and yeah, both of them, they are very friendly. So anyhow, it's stuck down because I definitely hear something down there, probably spiders. Yeah, spiders. Ah, yeah, that's that's definitely the goodness of of being able to of being able to summon from a distance. Okay, and oh. Oh, oh, she she rose that from the dead. Okay, never mind. That is one of the, the kind of creepy things that you need to get used to. And that... Yeah, I'm definitely doing some good damage. And this is a really tall cave. Because that looks like it's pretty far beneath me. But yeah. I knew I heard something. Okay. Switch back to something mode, but I think you definitely want to avoid falling from that height. Particularly because if you if you land wrong you might end up falling all the way down towards the bottom there. But yeah, this is this is definitely a, a sign that they have the game engine stuff figured out pretty well. That you can actually have this tall of a chamber and have it uh, have it still be playable. And also, it's a sign that the archery system works pretty well. Archery system isn't perfect. You can have issues with. Uh, Okay, uh, there's a spell called Banish Atronach that I really would like to have at some point. With the right perks, you can, um, you'll be able to set things up so that anytime you hit with a bound weapon, it, it banishes uh, Atronach, but. Okay, hello, and goodbye. Trying to remember if I still have that 
Oh goodness, one of these guys. I do not like... Yeah, definitely do not like uh, these guys. Like, if you have arachnophobia, this part of the game is definitely not for you. Okay, nothing I really want there. The cat has decided to get off my lap. Which is fine. Wow, did you see that? That thing really... Aha, and there's the sword. And so we're done here. We do need to return back up. And I'm sure whatever she has found, she can deal with it. Because unlike Jazargo, she cannot die. Which is pretty handy as an ability for a companion. Oh, and now the other cat wants to sit on my lap. So, that was a nice quick quest. We're going to continue onwards. Don't eat spicy food. This is what it does to me. Yeah, that is really... His facial hair is really long. I imagine they probably have to compens compensate uh, for not really wanting to... For not wanting to have lots of... Um, what, what do I do here find the ruins of Mosulft. I guess Steamcrag camp is, is uh, quicker here. So when you're doing 3D map, uh, mapping, the number of poly uh, polygons or the number of objects that you need to render is more of an issue than the size of what you need to render. So I would guess that having longer, uh, longer hair with fewer strands of it is probably how they deal with keeping the uh, polygon count lower, which is why the guy looks like he has spaghetti as, uh, as uh, his beard rather than rather than lots and lots of different hairs, which is how real beards work. Huh, this is kind of a neat design for a shield. Okay, so we are heading east, and oh, is that? Oh yeah, so this is definitely a fun part of this uh, mod that I have installed. It, yeah, it replaces mammoths with gigantic chickens, but they're still called mammoths. And I was just able to loot one. Now I'm heading, I think, east. Let's just double check. Yeah, almost due east. And if I can learn the locations of a few more things along the way, all the better. Unfortunately, because they changed the drops for giant chickens, or for mammoths, when they read, when they, uh, the words aren't that great. Oh, is this a person up here? All right, hand over your valuables, or I'll gut you like a fish. Oh yeah, hand over your fish, or I'll gut you like a valuable. Nice try. I'm not going to ask again. Of course. I've seen you at the flat. Good luck out there. Huh. That's interesting. I didn't know that the game would, would do that, but... Well, that's kind of neat. So yeah. Apparently once you join the Thieves Guild, the, uh, the thieves that you meet out in the wilderness are no longer a hostile. Well, at least you, you get that dialogue option that lets lets things be resolved that way. I imagine I still could have fought him if I hadn't uh, reminded him. But that's kind of handy. Okay, so... Yeah, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm not heading e east enough. Oh yeah, okay. I'm east and slightly north. Although I think this is the entrance to wherever this place is. Let's run up the hill and run up the hill. You're talking pretty serious endurance if you're running up a hill like this while wearing uh, armor. Okay, so here is Moswolft, which is yet another... What is... Hmm. 
Now what what did I have to do in here? I guess I could just head in, but I uh, I don't know what quest it is that I'm being requested to take care of. Although in any case, I know that I'm going to have a have a pretty good time. Oh yes, it looks like I'm level 48. I don't think I've trained for five times this level yet. So if I can afford it, the next time I meet a trainer. Crystal, go on. Oh, this is. Find Baratus in Oculori. Okay, so this is actually to advance the Major Guild quest. Well, might as well do that one here. But I'm gonna do it quickly if I can. Whoa! Oh, fortunately, fortunately that managed to miss me somehow. Oh, hey. Well, Vampire Lord doesn't really do a lot against... Uh, you can kill these guys, but you won't really gain any perk points from them, so... Actually, maybe a Bound Sword would be better, because that way I can still easily take care of... Uh, Take care of summoning another Atronaut. Because as I, I do want to make sure that I keep on uh, leveling. Okay, and there I decided not to bother with doing uh, with picking that. Okay, and that's. Dreamer Hero. Oh, so if I wanted Moonstone Ore, this would be a good source of it, but I don't really need it right now. Let's keep on moving. And I think... I will be seeing Cool. Got some experience with blocking there. These guys aren't really able to do me a lot of damage because I have some pretty good armor right now. Okay, let's keep moving. Is there anything up there I needed? So there are more things that I could mine if I wanted to here. Okay, this is where things get interesting. Karis Hunter. So the thing is, although this dungeon predates, um, squish. Yeah, so this dungeon does predate the, um, the, uh, oh shoot, the Dawn Guard add-on, but it, uh, but the game retcons the Dawn Guard creatures and drops and, uh, and stuff into pretty much many of the existing dungeons, so you don't, you're not really free of them, despite them another one. Oh, what happened? Oh, I have Frost Atronach here. Okay, well, let's conjure our help and, and work on... Sweet. Oh, and there's 
Okay, yeah, those, they really are pretty nasty. Um, candlelight, I think. Okay, that's what I want. Come around here. Let's continue through. Dwarven Sphere and Frost Atronaut can, can dance for a bit while I see if I can get this door open. Okay, these are some chests on the wall, which are pretty handy. The first time I, I went through, I didn't really notice, uh, or I didn't, it took me some time to figure out what those were. Let's pull out our shield and, oh, okay. Well. Looks like he... Oh. Somehow, my Atronach accidentally damaged my, uh... damaged Serana, so she got into a fight with it. So yeah, it is worth it. The game has a very complex faction system that keeps track of all the, uh all the friendliness and non-friendliness that can happen in the game. Why? Wow, check out the lighting on this fight. This is amazing. This is why this is one of the more popular mods. Um, just the cinematics suddenly become much more interesting. Okay. There is one of these spidery dudes. You'll often see me uh, backing off right before opening a door. This is largely because there are a lot of traps that uh, yeah, there are a number of traps that will shoot something nasty down on you right after you open the door. So if you back off you will often avoid like getting a spike through your gut. Okay, Ebony Mace and a Falmer. So this, I believe, marks a transition to the area where you'll start seeing Falmers, uh, or seeing Falmer reasonably often. So what we're looking for here now is the, hmm, oh the Synod, uh, so the Synod which is a rival mage organization had one of their researchers uh, here who um, was looking for magical artifacts and so they were suggested as a lead for how we would find the Staff of Magnus which is the counterpart to that gigantic disco ball thing. So, okay. So when you're fighting in the dark, you do have to do a little bit more guesswork to see if, uh, to know when to raise your shield and when to attack. And there is there's a little bit of a rhythm that that you could do if you can see everything. The rhythm is the same otherwise, but it just involves a little bit more guesswork. Okay, this guy has a bow and arrow. Not sure if he has anything but a bow and arrow. Where'd he go? There he is. Well, maybe. I can't really see him still. Aha. I really probably should be um, brightening up these fights a little bit more so that I can see what I'm swinging at. Okay, nothing 
to the right, nothing to the left. Let's keep moving. Okay, and there is another Falmer. Let's uh, summon a friend, bring up our shield. Okay, well, we'll let those... Well, actually, I think the only thing interesting there is drops, and we don't really need to worry too much about drops. So, yeah, we're just going to keep on moving. I mean, I guess we, we could care a little bit about drops, but we, uh, we are trying to get through this quest pretty quickly. Okay, and over here... I'll still go through chests. But I'm going to be a choosy with, uh... Okay, it's getting dark in here. Let's, again... Brighten up the place. And then bring our shield back up, and she t finished it off for me. Apparently it had been flying reasonably high, because it looked like it dropped pretty far from the ceiling. And... Aha. Get a nice set of free blows in here. Oop. Sweet. But. Okay, and we're going to summon some buds. Is there? Fighting two of these guys at the same time is a little bit challenging, but, but I can draw some fire for a Serana. Okay, and then I'm going to heal up. So I guess it still makes sense to do a little bit of looting of these guys, because occasionally they actually carry appreciable gold. That is one of the things that I that does get kind of old in, in Skyrim though. You you have to manage what you're doing with each hand quite a lot if you're gonna be uh, reasonably sensible about using a variety of attacks. But that's probably unavoidable. Where am I going? Uh, oh it's up here. Okay, let's. That is a regular Karist, but there's still. And I will. Okay, so we are. Those two are facing off, and I can probably. So, so in theory, there is um, you should be able to use uh, power attacks, which are uh, if you just hold the button down for a little bit longer, it'll use some stamina when you're actually doing the attack, and it does more damage, has a chance to stun your opponents, does all sorts of other fun things. And if you time those uh, those right or do them with a shield or do a, a shield bash when somebody is preparing a, a power attack. I think that... I think you get more benefits. Uh, like, it might have more of a chance to stun your foes or something like that, but I've never really uh, gotten the hang of that. OK. 
Okay. And let's heal up. Yeah, you can definitely see the benefits of benefits of having a decent mana pool because otherwise you either would be using potions all the time or you would be waiting a long time uh, to heal up between each of these attacks. So let's continue onwards. Oh, this room. Yeah, I remember this room. But I am taking enough damage that I am going to back off and heal up a little bit. And now let's switch back to our shield. This is also why it's so important uh, not to face too many foes at once, because if you are going to be blocking a blow and then swinging, it's not going to work out so well if you have to time your, your blocks to block multiple blows. Plus again, with your, uh, with your blows, unless you have a really good block skill, you're going to have the problem of... Of, uh, of taking enough damage with each block that you do that um, well that that your health is going to be threatened okay so let's keep on moving hello mr. Falmer okay so I am facing two foes right now both a Thalmer and a, uh, a Karis, I think. Okay. Okay. What now? Okay, let's keep moving. But actually, let's heal up while we're on our way and be ready to conjure another one of these guys can't really see what I'm doing okay oh it's this one yeah I remember this room okay Yeah, so she's doing a pretty good job at killing these dudes. Where did I come from? Uh, so I've done everything but the but the right. So let's slip down these stairs. I don't remember. I believe that we need to get a, a key from somewhere to unlock something or another. I don't remember where the key, where the door is that needs the key. Is this the door that needs the key? And also there's something else that we need from one of these Falmer, I think. Whoa, hello. That's no good. I hope that I'm actually ready to... Okay, so that, that only staggers this guy a little bit. Fortunately, it's really easy to see when he's about to swing. And 
he is gone. Okay. And yeah, eventually you do kind of develop a certain expertise in swapping quickly between uh, weapons. Oh, there's another Felmer. Oh, but it's it's an undead Felmer. So it's not going to be bothering us because it is a servant of... Uh... Okay, so we don't need anything here. And that might have actually been the key that we wanted. So let's keep on moving. I think one of the Felmer somewhere around here has... Uh, I don't remember what it is, but it has something that we need to get. Uh, anyhow... Focusing crystal, that's what we need. And now we have it. So, which direction have we not gone yet? We haven't gone straight, and we haven't gone to the right. Now, to the right, there is a door, but I don't think there was... Any. Well, let's, let's just see what's down here. Might as well be thorough. Well, we know that it's a side door because it's locked, and it's locked at a master, uh, with a master lock. Um, let's see. Where is the combination? Is it far left? Yeah, somewhere far left. Just a little bit off from being full. Let's see. Okay, a little bit further than that. So let's try maybe this much. A little bit further than that. Let's see if it's... Oh, well, there were times where it didn't break immediately, but it's somewhere around here, I think. Further. Okay, maybe not quite covering this lightness on the upper portion here. No, a little bit further down from that. So it's touching the lightness. A little bit further down. No. Well, it's definitely on this clouded lightness that you can kind of see. There we go. Got it. Oh, just a film or chest. And I think, or if I decided that I wanted to do some mining. And yeah, the reason I didn't panic there is that when you're... When you do have uh, an undead version of an enemy, then typically they, they have a little bit of a purple glow there, and I spotted that. Which is an important thing for you to uh, to notice if you are going to be traveling with. G is that you? Uh, if you're going to be traveling with uh, with uh, Serana very much, she likes to raise the dead. Oh, hi. It was the fault of Gavros and you. If you're here for it, didn't work. Okay. Gavros had to cart it all the way back. This. Yep. This is what we want. Okay. Let's go. You Sabos. I don't much. Come on. I'll like, what the? Okay. No matter what Yakos said, this was my idea. So this guy really loves to brag. I was the one who thought of using this this oculorium. I don't know what the dwarves call it. Something unpronounceable, I'm sure. From all our research, it seems they were intent on discerning the nature of the divine. This machine, all of it, was designed to collect starlight, and then. I'm not sure. Split it somehow? It was my idea to replace one of the key elements with our focusing crystal. Months of enchantment went into it. Let's just hope they got it right this time. Here it is. Magnificent, isn't it? Oh, well, that's kind of cool looking. Now I'm hoping it'll all be worth it. Place the crystal in the central apparatus, and we can start the process for focusing it. Okay, works for me. 
What now, dude? Yes. Now the crystal needs to be focused. Heating and cooling the crystal. You'll need to use spell. There should be a few basic tones around here somewhere in case your training is even more substandard than I've heard. Okay, so these are the basic three, or uh, I'm sorry, the, the basic heating and cooling spells, and I don't think I've used a destruction magic much at all in this, so I might not know both of these. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I didn't know the frost spell. So there's kind of a irritating need to use both of these, but the first... Oh, first... Okay, so I guess we do head down here, and we need to... Is that right? Okay, you need to keep on heating and cooling the crystal until uh, there's a line on each level of these... Uh, of these uh, rings in the ceiling. I guess we'll call it that. Because, yeah, you can see... The ceiling, well, it's not super easy to explain, but unfortunately there's a good bit of trial and error in this. Since you want to apply just enough heat, to, uh, or just enough to, uh, to rotate it properly. Okay, so that looks pretty good there. We have one on the top circle, one on the bottom circle, and one on the middle circle. That should be sufficient. So now I want to hop out of here. Okay. And I'm going to press the whirly gigs. Oh yeah, and each of these whirly gigs uh, applies to a different one of these. That's the top one done. Let's get the middle one all lined up. and. The, uh, in the lowest one. No, I don't... Why do you stand there? Don't stand right there. Oh, we're getting close. One more. Looking good. What's this? These results... They're not at all what they should be. This projection should be lit up like the night sky. So yeah, he's about to tell us uh, this dwarven device is used to project um, Tamriel and they're using it to locate uh, items in, in the game that have lots and lots of magic uh, in them. What have you done? Did you know what we were attempting? Are you here to make sure your plan worked? That our efforts have been for nothing? Well, explain yourself. Go wrong? Everything is wrong. Everything. Whatever you have it, how did you do it? Either you're... You have something at your college, don't you? Some... The Eye of Magnus? Well, well, that's interesting. Yes, the staff. Interesting. I can't explain the details. That would be giving away many secrets the Synod have learned over the years. Yep, but, uh... Also, I the Disco Ball is the Eye of Magnus. And we want the uh, the staff of Magnus. Now you can see that little uh, island up there. I believe that's the item where the DLC uh, Dragonborn is set. Uh, Soul's time. And this here is the province, I think, of Cyrodiil, which is the center of the Empire, due south of uh, Skyrim, which is up here. So, mage from Winterhold, despite your intentions, I've beaten your little game. Even if all you've said here is lies, I know you have something in Winterhold the Synod Council will be very interested in. So fine, trudge off to Labyrinthian in search of your staff. I shall return to Cyrodiil and deliver my full report to the Council. Okay. This is not over. Works for me. I assure you. Well, I mean... The council will be informed. They will find out what you're up to. Okay, so we are done here. 
And the next time we're back at the College of Winterhold, we can advance that quest line a little bit further. Now, if you like, you could kill him to stop him from reporting back to the college. Um, you might be th thematically okay because you would be saving the college some interference from the synod. You have done well thus far, but trying times are but it is I see little uh, little need to to do that generally. So you will be called on to take swift action, rise to the challenge, and discover what you are capable of. Join the army. You are on the right path. Okay, well, good to hear from those guys again. We will continue. Uh, we're going to head back to Riften and drop off some of the stuff that I picked up, particularly the drops from that gigantic chicken, because giant chicken eggs and, and such are quite heavy. We could swing into Stony Creek Cave. I guess we don't really have any other appointments to take care of around here, except for this. But we're also fairly. F but this should be a quick, should be a reasonably quick diversion. So yeah, I think I will do this on the way back. At least I'm hoping this will be a quick dungeon trip, and I'm hoping that there won't be too much loot that I'll be tempted to carry back. But we shall see. I think it was a little bit east of where this uh, quick travel point is. Interesting seeing the reinforcement beneath the head of the hammer. I imagine a, a lot of reinforcement would be needed to stop uh, the head from falling off if that were to strike something heavy. Okay, east. Oh, is it actually this barrow? No, it isn't the barrow straight ahead. It's a cave a little bit north of, of that. It's probably that cave, but maybe I should learn this barrow while I'm here because it's really nearby. But I'm hearing something that's probably about to nip at my heels. Some spidey. Might be one of those rat things. Okay. But that looks like an unhappy mage. I'm not going to bother. Okay. Now we are going to head to this cave that is due north that I believe is what we want for that quest. Now I am realizing that I probably should be putting a little bit more effort into finding uh, or getting restoration training because that is a, a type of training that tends to be kind of slow, uh, slow to get up to a good level. Plus, as an undead, there's actually a perk, uh, a restoration perk that I can take that makes all spells um, more effective on undead, which would, uh, which means that if I were to heal myself, I would get more benefit. Oh yeah, this is a really quick diversion, if I'm doing it right. Oh, but I need to actually go up the path, not directly up the waterfall. So yep, yeah, I think I should probably, I'm running sh uh, shy on time, but I should be able to finish this up uh, probably
before um, before I need to end this video. So, let's see. Okay, there is one more bandit dead. Up here. that I think has what I'm looking for, Finn's loot, looking good. And that's it. Yeah, this this is just one of the, the easiest, quickest uh, side dungeons in the game. There actually is a little bit more to the cave if I head further up, but it's not really necessary to uh, to go there. And you actually end up coming out that way from an, uh, another dungeon anyhow. So yeah, this is this is an adequate quick diversion. And let's see if there's anything else I have to do. No, I could head down to Shore Stone actually, though, and pick up an ore sample, which I think I needed to deliver to. Oh, was it the? The alchemist. Ooh, but those are some bandits that are definitely not friendly. Friendly, but I want to just head due south. Okay, I don't really want to fight those guys. So yeah, it's pretty much south and a little bit east. Moving. She's getting in a fight with somebody, but she should be fine. Did something just hit me? Whoa! Oh, it's my arch enemy, Bear. Bye bye. I don't want to face a bear right now. Oh, and it sounds like there's a Spriggan nearby. Oh, I guess that didn't work well enough. Really do not like bears. Okay, let's keep moving. A minus Torvald's cave. Oh, but I'm going. S I was accidentally heading east. I want to go south. But that's that's a good place marker. If I ever uh, need it. So I can help that fox escape. I think. Yeah. She took care of uh, of making sure that dies. So you might be noticing that my stamina is not regenerating that impressively. And something is attacking me from behind. Oh, these it's the Dawn Guard. The vampire hunters. Fortunately, it's like the wolves are, are not very friendly towards them. Oh, where did my unrelenting... Uh... I'm not sure how... Oh, that's weird. I guess these might...
Actually, the Dungard tend to have some pretty decent uh, stuff for you to pick up if you like that kind of thing. Except I am taking some pretty good damage. So let's heal up. Not your best. Uh, it's pretty good. It's not my best, but it's not bad. Okay, and then there is one more last dude. I'm not sure where Serana went. You won't leave alive. I'm not trying to leave Skyrim. Okay, so this seems like a pretty decent breaking point. Um, I'm heading south. Well, actually, let's see how much time I have left. Um, yeah, I think I still have time to make it uh, to town if I uh, if I hurry. Well, actually, I have my head due west. So, and it is fortunately already on my. on my compass, which is good. It's very handy that Serana cannot be killed because, although she might take a little bit of time to catch up, I don't need to worry about her like I did with Jisargo. Okay, so this is where we want to be. And we wanted to pick up an ore sample here, I believe. So I will do that at the beginning of the uh, next episode. I've been your host, Pat Gunn. And this has been my Let's Play for Skyrim. <laughs>